This is a live presentation of the Thai Cats Audio Network. Are you ready? Thai Cats football is on the air. Touchdown, Tiger Cats! Caught it! It's a touchdown! Number 17, Luke Tasker, what a catch! Now the voice of the Tiger Cats. Here is RJ Broadhead with analyst Luke Tasker. Welcome to game number 13 of the season. Tim Hortons Field, beautiful day. It's 22 degrees, very little wind, about six kilometers. I'm RJ Broadhead with Luke Tasker, and there is a buzz at Tim Hortons Field. Luke, this is a rivalry, even though it's West Division. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are a team that the Tiger Cats have to beat today. If they win this game, they'll be tied with Montreal for second spot in the East Division, and then... We'll spend a lot of time talking about that home playoff game that would be a lot more realistic if they could win this one. It sure would, and they'll pull ahead of Ottawa and Calgary, the team that's sort of sitting there, maybe in a position for a crossover potentially. A lot of football still in this season before anything like that clarifies, but they would do themselves a huge credit by beating a very good Winnipeg Blue Bomber team, team here at Tim Hortons Field. And we've seen that done just about a year ago with a big upset uh, and, and a team that also uh, from Winnipeg that was doing very good a year ago and the Ticats got an upset that day. So maybe it's in the water today, RJ, and these uh, Ticats in the all black uh, look poised and ready. Tiger Cats at five and seven, Winnipeg first place in the West at 10 and three. And you brought it up, Luke. Last year, game 13 of the season to kick off the final third of the regular season. Winnipeg came to Tim Hortons Field. Uh, Tiger Cats wore all black, as they are this afternoon, wearing all black, and they won that game. Not many people were giving the Tiger Cats credit for an opportunity to win that game a year ago, but they managed to do it and went 5-1 and one in their final six games. Tiger Cats this year, Luke, feel like a team that's percolating. They've been trying to gel. They've been yeah. trying to find themselves, and we're starting to see the real Tiger Cats, so... This matchup might be closer than statistically it looks like on paper. We will have to see. We will be back with the coin toss and the kickoff on the Ticats Audio Network. Welcome back. Almost set for the coin toss. It is a partly cloudy sky, so a beautiful afternoon at Tim Hortons Field as September clips right along. Final third of the regular season, and the Tiger Cats are hoping the best is yet to come. What a game last night between Montreal and Toronto. Came down to a blocked field goal at the very end by Toronto to hang on to that victory, but that East Division is going to be extremely interesting, and there was a while, a few weeks ago, Luke, where a home playoff game for the Tiger Cats didn't seem possible. Now it does. Yeah, it does. And, uh, two out of the last three games, the interesting thing is it's been pretty volatile. They've won two of the last three, but of course that middle, that loss stuck in the middle there was pretty uh, disheartening at the Labor Day Classic here at Tim Hortons Field. But the Ticats and Taylor Powell at quarterback, uh, th you're right, you used the word percolating earlier, which I think is a very, very good, <laughs> good choice of words. It's getting very interesting. We're seeing, we're seeing some interesting growth. And uh, Taylor Powell last three games has seven touchdowns and one interception, v vastly different from his starts prior to that. Uh, and we've got uh, a, a, a developing offense and, and a team that's uh, starting to make some, some big plays. I think back to Ottawa, I think back to the game against Ottawa and we saw some really what I would call heroic defense there uh, and, and uh, excited to see more of that today. I was having a coffee, that's why I thought of percolating. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at some of the statistics, Luke, it is definitely skewed in Winnipeg's favor. They're one of the best in almost every category this season. What's your sense? Why do you think the Tiger Cats have a have a chance this afternoon because if it was purely based on paper, the Bombers would be the distinct favorite. Yeah, and to uh, hammer that down, uh, the 24 offensive statistics that the league carries and continues to see throughout, 
uh, Winnipeg is number one in more than half of those. I mean, they are really, they've got a really well-oiled machine uh, led by Zach Caleros. That was C.J. Gable down there doing the Oski Wee Wee on the field. Which Former is, uh, teammate of yours. Oh, yeah, great guy. And had a great chat with him on the Ticats Audio Network this week. Uh, but no, the Ticats are, are they're, they're positioned to, to, to beat good teams. They've already done it out in BC by beating a very good BC Lion team. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in town today, they are resilient. And a team that's so, that is so efficient on offense, they can overcome adversity. But that doesn't mean that the Ticats can't put together a game as well. Now, I don't think you can let Zach Caleros get off to a, a, a huge lead right off the bat. That's going to be tough. And that, the, Zach Caleros and his Blue Bomber offense is coming off a game where they scored, where he threw five uh, touchdown passes. Uh, uh, that you can't you can't allow that to happen at Tim Hortons Field. And this Mark Washington's defense needs to uh, be solid and allow Taylor Powell's offense to uh, develop here. Well, it's time for the Tiger Cats to establish that Tim Hortons Field dominance. A really large discrepancy between their home and road record. Just one and five at Tim Hortons Field. They've lost four in a row at home. While on the road, they've won four in a row and have a four and two record, so that's great. The, the road play is taken care of. They just have to get it going at home, and maybe today's the day. Winnipeg won the coin toss. They deferred, so Hamilton will receive. Pretty good crowd at Tim Hortons Field. It'll be loud. They'll try to be loud when that Winnipeg offense is on the field. Make it difficult for them. We've seen... The crowd play a factor at times at Tim Hortons Field, and let's see if Tyreek McAllister can get the crowd into it right off the opening kickoff. Sergio Castillo kicks off for Winnipeg, and he kicks it to Sean Thomas Erlington. He was directing it there, and there's a big opening as Thomas Erlington gets across the 40. He was running right along the numbers and returned at 23 yards. Yeah, you thought for a second he was going to break that through the first line of, of Winnipeg. Uh, coverage team there, but able to bring him down. This is good starting field position, though, for the Ticats. So looking at the depth chart, it had Brandon Revenberg at left tackle, and Luke, it looks like he is going to line up there. So Brandon Revenberg, perennial all-star at left guard. Jordan Zott is at left guard, at least for this opening play. And it's a swing pass off to Tyreek McAllister out of the backfield. He'll get across the 45, and he'll have close to five yards on that catch. Well, nice job there. You've got Adam Big Hill, Mike Linebacker, tagging right on there to that swing out of the backfield to McAllister. And it was Omar Bayless cracking back who actually blocked and got Adam Big Hill on the ground and allowing for a short gain there on the first play of the game. To continue with that story, Brandon Revenberg back at left guard, and Joel Figueroa comes in at left tackle. He's the designated American. Second and six here for the Tiger Cats. They're on their own 47. Far hash mark. Taylor Powell back to pass, looking left, throwing left. He's got an open receiver. It's a high pass. Going up to make the catch is Terry Godwin. And it is a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Great job, Terry Godwin so sharp at the top of his routes and he peels off of that corner route and flattens down to make the throw and the catch very easy. We call it quarterback friendly and really impressed with Godwin's ability to do just that. Godwin now three catches from 50 on the season. More importantly, Tiger Cats are in Winnipeg territory. Opening drive of the game, they're on the Winnipeg 42. Fresh set of downs. Taylor Powell might be changing the play. Looks like Winnipeg's coming. It's a handoff to James Butler. He slowed at the line and then bounces off to the right to gain a couple of yards. Yeah, changed the play at the line there. Looked like a sort of like a, a, a Superman uh, uh, call. You know, a hand, two fists pulling pulling the shirt off of his chest, and it was a run up the run off the right side there, but. The bombers were loaded up. They were bringing a lot of pressure. I was expecting that to be changed to sort of a quick, a quick uh, read uh, pass there, but second and eight or less. Ball up to the 40, so a second and long here for the Tiger Cats. Let's see if Taylor Powell and the offense can cash in. Quick pass, near side, right along the numbers. It's caught by Tim White, his first reception of the game. He's got the first down and more right down near the Winnipeg 25. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. Awesome. Tim White just isolated to the far right side there, and he just has 
one-on-one -on -one route there to run a curl route to get open and his speed creates that space. Taylor Powell makes a great read. And that's another first down. Really good looking first drive here from Taylor Powell. Ball on the Winnipeg 27. Pressure coming. Taylor Powell under center. Hands it off to James Butler, who gets through the hole, takes a hard hit, but he got four or five yards before Brandon Alexander brought him down. Yeah, really good patience there by James Butler. He's able to approach the line of scrimmage and just take a slight hesitation before he picks that lane to cut back through. And even with that blue bomber uh, pressure and a, and a stout front four, he's able to, to squeeze through for a four or five yard gain. Tiger Cats have converted a second and six and a second and eight on this drive. Now they have another second and six on the Winnipeg 23. Taylor Powell empty backfield and he's scrambling now. They're going to bring him down at about the 25. So he'll lose a few yards as the Bombers brought the pressure and were able to get to Taylor Powell and that will bring on the field goal team. Well, the quarterback sacks have gotten less and less as we as Taylor Powell uh, has continued to get more and more starts and experience that was a very well timed rush and, you know. so Mark Leggio lining up for a 32 yard field goal same distance as uh, convert Leggio has been successful on his last four in a row the snap is held by Corey Vedvik and the kick by Mark Leggio is good. And the Tiger Cats, like they did in week one against Winnipeg, they score a field goal on their opening drive. An early lead for the Tiger Cats with 10.35 to go in the opening quarter. It's 3 0 Hamilton. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats audio now. A good start for the Tiger Cats. We're able to move the ball, get into field goal range, and Mark Leggio was good from 32 yards. It's a 3 0 lead for the Tiger Cats in all black. This afternoon with the gold numbers, Winnipeg gold pants and helmets with the white tops, blue shoulders. They're going to try it on the ground right away, and Brady Oliveira slips, and Jonathan Kongbo was able to bring him down after a gain of a couple of yards. Gain of three, second and seven. Tiger Cats have only held opponents under 100 yards rushing twice this season. So expect to see a lot of Brady Oliveira until this defense can prove they're able to stop him. It's second and seven from the Winnipeg 43. Opening drive for the Bombers here and Zach Calero steps back, completes the pass and it should be enough for the first down. Dalton Schoen made the catch and Simone Lawrence who's been racking up tackles lately makes that one. Yeah, three man rush there by the Ticats on that second and eight and Zach Caleros quickly finding Dalton Show, not taking much time in the pocket there. Wisely so, Simone was, was moving to get, in, to get in position, but not quickly enough. Not a surprise, they went to Dalton Schoen. That's his 23rd second down reception. Came into the game second in the league. Hand off, right up the middle, and this Hamilton defense was swarming. They were hungry to bring down the runner. I think it was Nick Dempsey yeah, took I, it out of the backfield, I, right? I think you're right. I was pretty sure it wasn't Oliveira. I was waiting to see the number. You're right. It was Nick Dembski. Interesting. That's one thing I really like about Winnipeg's offense. They are creative in the run game, which is sort of uh, unique. CFL is no, it's a passing league. Everyone's got some creativity in the passing game, but I think they have some really unique ways of getting into the run uh, in Winnipeg. Dembski. Got the handoff there. He's six yards shy of 800 receiving yards on the season. Here's a second and eight right from midfield. Caleros with time. Throws over the middle. Oh. And it's incomplete. It was intended for Kenny Lawler and Kenneth George Jr. had great coverage on him. He did. And if and if it wasn't for Kenneth George Jr. sort of uh, almost nearly making a play on that ball, you almost could see Stavros Katzentonis having got getting having received got his fourth interception of the season there, but hits the turf, and that's a great stop for the Ticat defense, shy of field goal position for the Blue Bombers. Stavros is one of those players where the ball finds him. He's always oh. around the ball. <laughs> so he came close there, and the defense gets a stop on the Bombers. So they will have to punt on their opening drive. This ball is kicked to the 
far sideline. High Rick McAllister gets it in his 15. He's across the 20, breaks a couple of tackles, and he'll be just a little bit short of the 25 yard line. So the Tiger Cats, each team has had a position, uh, possession, and the Tiger Cats continue to lead three to nothing. Taylor Powell in the offense is back on the field when we come back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. 8.05 to go in the opening quarter. Game 13 of the season for the Tiger Cats coming off that win against Ottawa. It's three nothing. Tiger Cats lead, scored on their opening possession. Here's possession number two. Let's see what Taylor Powell and the Tiger Cats can do. They'll start from their own 24, so tough starting field position. Four receivers to the field side. That's to the right of Taylor Powell. They fake the waggle, and now Terry Godwin heads to the boundary side, and here's a pitch to Tim White. He's waiting for some blocking ahead. He's across the 40, the 50. He's into Winnipeg territory, the 45, the 40, the wow. 35, and then he's finally brought down. There was a ton of motion by the Tiger Cats before that snap, and it worked. It's a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Wow, what a well-designed play. You're right, RJ, you nailed it. All that motion, and they got the Blue Bombers in man coverage for a 52-yard gain. What happens when all those guys are already locked in, when somebody motions, somebody's got to follow them, and there's confusion in the backfield. Well executed. Started on their 24, now they're on the Winnipeg 34, and they keep it on the ground. Winnipeg tough to run against, and working for a couple of yards was James Butler. And they got the right guy on that reverse, too. Tim White with his speed <laughs> caught it. Very, very efficient little little pitch, you know, crisscrossing motions, but it was Tim White who kind of ended up with the ball and broke through the few defenders that were left on that right side of the formation. What a great play and great execution. Demario Houston had to come from his corner spot on the other side to make the tackle. Tim White at open field, he's tough to track down. Here's a second and eight from the Winnipeg 32. Taylor Powell under pressure now, running to his right. Throws on the run, completes it to Sean Thomas Erlington. He's down to the 15 and tackled. Just short of the 10 yard line, it is another first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Boy, I gotta say, there's just, they're getting some great defenses for the plays that they're running. And that time, Adam Big Hill's in, in what we call a match where his eyes are just locked to the outside of the field. His back's almost to the ball. He's a last line of defense player, and he gets drawn out of there and, and was entirely clueless to Sean Thomas Erlington coming in behind him to make that reception. Just really great uh, strategy and play call here. They will give the Tiger Cats the 10 yard line, so it's first and goal from the 10. Taylor Powell calmly in the shotgun, hands off to James Butler, a stutter step that cuts to his left, and Winnipeg's on him. He maybe got four yards on that carry. Well, this would be a huge moment in this in the early part of this game here if the Ticats can overcome this difficult second and seven, uh, se second and goal on the seven, I should say. But they need, oh boy, a 10 point lead on this Blue Bomber team yes. feels pretty good uh, if you can, if you halfway through this first quarter. Tiger Cats in their two games coming into this one. Six for seven in the red zone. Starting to cash in touchdowns instead of field goals. They need a touchdown here. Second and goal from the seven. Taylor Powell gets the snap, wants to pass. On the run, he completes it. It's a touchdown. Terry Godwin, the Tiger Cats do cash in. And it's nine, nothing with the convert coming up. Wow, Terry Godwin crossing from left to right. He caught that just shy of the goal line and muscled his way into the end zone through the tackle. RJ, you said it. I mean, it's just plain as if they're getting better in the score zone. They just are. They're, they're making it happen. Their confidence is growing that you can tell. They've got multiple players making plays uh, already in this game to take a, a two-score lead right off the bat. Terry Godwin had no touchdowns, and now he's got three in his last three games, so he's on a roll. Mark Leggio steps up for the extra point, and that's good. Tiger Cats off to a fantastic start. At home, Tim Hortons Field, it is 10-0. Tiger Cats leading the Blue Bombers with 4.33 to go in the opening quarter. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Thanks for joining us in the Ticats Audio Network. RJ Bryant in with Luke Tasker. Luke, 
what quarter is this? <laughs> Still the first, RJ. Can what? you believe that? Second first quarter touchdown for the Tiger Cats. They had struggled scoring in the opening quarter. They put up 10 points on the Bombers so far, and there's still four and a half to go. Mark Leggio kicking off. And the Bombers will get it at their own 20, running just outside the numbers. And Anthony Federico throws a, a big hit on Parker, the returner for the Bombers. Jamal Parker brought down, and Anthony Federico has really carved a, a nice niche into this special teams unit for the Tiger Cats. Yeah, that was a great coverage. You actually thought that there was a little bit more space, but number 91 came up, kind of just a lightning bolt, shot right through the gap with good timing, and that was a big collision. So the Tiger Cats lead 10 to nothing with 4.27 to go in the opening quarter. It's a good start for the Tiger Cats. Now the key is to get a stop. They did it on the first possession and now they'll try to do it again against this Winnipeg Blue Bombers offense that again statistically is right near the top in almost every offensive category. Well that first drive for the Winnipeg offense you saw a run and actually sort of Oliveira actually slipped on that first run of the game for them, but great conversion on that first down with a quick one to Dalton Schoen. And that next set of downs there, you had a really great stop by the Ticats defense on first down. And it was the secondary, the coverage unit that caused that punt formation on the field after with really, really tight play by Kenneth George Jr. Man, just really good play call by Mark Washington. And a great way, getting great job of getting off the field right as they were shy of field goal range. Boy, you've got you've got complimentary football so far, RJ. You've got three phases of the Tie Cats yes. working well. You're uh, you're you're winning in, in uh, uh, on those on those two kickoffs. You've got a, you've got the hand in the field position uh, battle. You've got a defense with a big second down stop, and you've got an offense that's now overcome second down. I, I want to say four times already in this first half. Uh, and then with capitalizing on that huge uh, conversion for Terry Godwin's touchdown. Hamilton is four for five on second down conversions, so you're exactly right with those four successful second down conversions. Not making it easy on themselves on first down, but as long as they can get that second down. Well, with Terry Godwin and Tim White doing, doing what they're doing so far, uh, you, can, you can have a little scooch room there on second down. Last week against Ottawa, Hamilton had 93 yards rushing. That Tim White rush was 52 yards, so that aspect's going better. Zach Caleros throwing oh. deep over the middle. Oh, almost picked off by Jameer Thurman. He came out of nowhere to jump in front of Kenny Lawler and almost picked it off, but it is incomplete. Well, what did we say as that first drive ended? Zach Caleros threw that ball. Kenneth George Jr. was in great coverage, and it was Stavros, Katz, and Tonis who almost was in position for a pick. This time, Jameer Thurman was dropping from his linebacker depth. You could almost see Zach Caleros focusing to that left side, trying to wait for that receiver to come open, and it was Jameer Thurman spying him and in great position. That should have been an interception. Under four minutes to go, opening quarter. Ty Cats lead 10 0. Here's a second and 10. Winnipeg on their own 37. Pressure coming. Calaris going deep. Near sideline. It's a perfect pass. It's caught. Dembski inside the Hamilton 25 yard line. And Simone Lawrence came a long way to make that tackle. And good thing he did because it prevented a touchdown. Well, that was quite the second down conversion right there. And Zach Calaris threw that ball on a corner route to his left well before the receiver made the break actually and that is that's timing and, and expertise and, and being on the same wavelength and that was a perfectly thrown ball yeah kind of thought that caleros and the bombers would go after that field side with rookie dexter lawson and lawrence woods with adela k and richard leonard both hurt they get a big gain there they're on the hamilton 23 throwing over the middle Hanson Tonis trying to make the tackle, but dragging him along was Dalton Schoen refusing to go down, and he'll be just short of the Hamilton five. Well, the unfortunate reality of this drive is that was a quick 50 yards after what should have been a turnover, a uh, forced interception, yes. which would just be an absolutely uh, game-changing moment uh, already with a two-score lead. Uh, that interception would have been in field goal position right, right where the play ended. But very quickly after that, 
this Blue Bomber offense capitalizes and is now on the tie cat, uh, inside the tie cat 10. Ball's on the seven, so first and goal from the seven. Handoff goes to Oliveira, he goes up the middle. He'll be down at the five. Tackled there by Casey Sales. Well, with a 10-point lead, you've got a second and goal on the five-yard line. Every single little yard matters on this play. If you can stop them for less than four yards, you're going to force Sergio Castillo on the field for the field goal. Well, remember what the Tiger Cats did last week against Ottawa. Stopped them three times from the one. You need a stop here. It's second and goal from the five. Bombers have three receivers to the right. Ball centered between the hash marks, throws into the end zone. It's a touchdown, Nick Dembski. So the Bombers answer the Tiger Cats touchdown with one of their own. Yeah, very nearly. That was a nice crossing route from Dembski, and it was Jagera Davis dropping out of the defensive front there, trying to get back in position, but very well thrown, uh, well threaded football there from Caleros. Good teams are able to answer scores, and Winnipeg, we know, is a very good team. So it's game on here at Tim Hortons Field. Tiger Cats still lead 10 6. Sergio Castillo is out there attempting the 32 yard convert. Here's the kick. It is up, and he missed it. He missed the convert. Tyreek McAllister's going to run it out, and he's up to the 10, the 20. He's running along the sidelines. He's getting some blocking. He's up to the 50 midfield, the 45. <laughs> he's going to score 25-20. Tyreek McAllister on the missed convert takes it all the way to the end zone. Wow. Cool. Why not? No <laughs> flags on the play. It's going to stand. Steal two points away from this team, and it's a three-point swing, of course, with the missed extra point. <laughs> what an awesome one. He just stole a field goal away from the Blue Bombers, right? I mean, just really, yeah. what a great effort. And boy, I'll tell you what, the Ticats kickoff, or excuse me, field goal block team, who all of a sudden then has to flip gears and say, whoa, Tyreek is running, I gotta, I gotta block. And they did it well. They turned it on, and everyone got in position to get on a blue and white jersey, and what a play there by McAllister. 126 yards, we believe, on that return for Tyreek McAllister. <laughs> That's terrific. Two points for that. So it's 12-6, Tiger Cats lead, and gets them the momentum right back after the Bombers scored the touchdown. But let's run through Tyreek McAllister's season on returning kicks. <laughs> He's taken two back for touchdowns that have been called back on penalties. And now this one is off a missed convert, he doesn't so only gets two points. <laughs> Poor Tyree. <laughs> I, I was on the field for the first ever missed convert return for points by Brandon Banks. When they moved the field goal back, nobody had ever done that before. And Speedy B did it for the first time in a, in a win against Ottawa, I believe. But exciting play, cool moment in the game there. And yes. now, Ticats buffer their lead a little bit from what should have been. Yeah, old Mo back on the Tiger Cats side, and they get the football. So 12-6 lead for the Tiger Cats, under a minute to go in the opening quarter. Ooh. Lawrence Woods has the crowd buzzing. You couldn't put Tyreek McAllister out there again. He's exhausted. And Woods with a nice return, very close to the Hamilton 50. So the Tiger Cats will have good field position here. Yeah, great field position. And the kickoff team for Winnipeg is currently, you know, going, you know, north from the mountain towards the lake here. And, you know, you'd think they should really have the wind, although now I look, it's kind of doing a classic Tim Hortons Field yeah. swirly action here. Yeah. But <laughs> they, they were supposed to have Magic. the wind. <laughs> and, and now it seems to have flipped, but great field position. Taylor Powell, five for five, 66 yards passing and a touchdown. Second time this year, Tiger Cats have scored on their first two possessions. James Butler made the miss at the line, wow. and he finally finds an opening. Runs off to the left. He's into Winnipeg territory, down near the Winnipeg 50, and it's a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Great job by James Butler. At the start of that play, I did not like how it was looking. I mean, exactly. the, the Blue Bombers had the box loaded up. It seemed like they had penetration in the backfield, but 
it's that uh, the great running backs are both a combination of patience and burst, and really well done there by number nine. Ball on the Winnipeg 51. This should be the final play of the opening quarter. A good quarter for the Tiger Cats. They lead 12 to 6. Taylor Powell back to pass, and he's not going to pass. He's going to run, and he started to head up the middle, and he will slide. Got about five yards, though, on that carry. Yeah, I, li I like how quickly he decided to do that. There was space ahead of him, and on first down, you might as well steal five yards. Well done there. Good decision. Tiger Cats have a very good first quarter. They lead the Bombers at Tim Hortons Field, 12 to 6. Second quarter action is coming up on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Tiger Cats get set for the second quarter. They have the football fresh off their highest scoring opening quarter of the season. They put up 12 points against the Bombers and they lead 12 6. Ball is on the Winnipeg 45. It's a second and four here for the Tiger Cats. Now the Tiger Cats in all black going from right to left. Taylor Powell standing on the Tim Hortons logo at midfield. Gets the snap, looks to his left. A quick glance that way. Now he wants to go right, and he's scrambling off to his right. He's in trouble. Throws on the run. He's got an open receiver. It's complete to Omar Bayless. Wow. Down inside the Winnipeg 30. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. Not enough time to talk about that play. A lot of good stuff, but Taylor Powell patient in the pocket until he can't be, escapes, gets tripped, gets his feet, and keeps his eyes downfield. Because we could see it from up here, it is much harder for him to see it down there, <laughs> yes. but he ended up finding, finding Bahar for a great first down. Taylor Powell so even keeled, doesn't pay attention to statistics, likes to keep the opponents faceless, so he's not phased by these bombers. And he's gone six for six in passing for 84 yards. He's thrown one touchdown already, trying to score on another possession. Back to pass, has time, throws, it's a low pass, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Terry Godwin. But the Bombers brought some pressure there, and, and Powell recognized that, tried to get rid of it quick, but there really wasn't a great throwing lane there to his right side, and now you've got a second and 10 here. Infield position. You can't turn the ball over, and you don't want to take a, a, a tackle for a loss here. But we'll see if they can overcome another second down. They've converted five of six. Three receivers to the left of Taylor Powell. That's the field side. Tim White comes a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Taylor Powell looks to his left. Oh. And it took a long time, it seemed, to get to Keandre Smith. And by the time it did, Reddick Cramdy was there, and it might have hit him. If he had it turned around, he might have been able to pick it off. Yeah, that's great. And that, uh, you know, great job by Taylor Powell, understanding that Cramdy was not in a, it, it, it was not in position to make a play on the football just with his body language. But you thought that was going to be a reception. Unfortunate to, or unable to pull that in there. That, that two-point conversion, RJ, is very interesting now. In a six-point game, what would have been a three-point game, this field goal uh, is very important here. Mark Leggio, 35-yard attempt. Gordon White, the long snapper. Corey Bedwick, the holder. And now the kick is up, and it's good. Mark Leggio on a nice roll. He's hit his last six field goals in a row. And the Tiger Cats keep scoring. They've done so on every possession so far. And they lead 15 to 6. We're early in the second quarter. And we'll be right back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Tiger Cats have scored on their first three possessions of this football game. And going back to last game, they've scored on five of their last six. They lead 15 to 6. Here's a pitch. Zach Caleros pitched it to. I think Rashid Bailey. Yes, I think uh, you're right. And what, what, RJ, that's what I'm talking about. They, their run game is so creative. I just think yeah. it's really interesting. That's another receiver getting the ball. It was actually a little pitch forward from Caleros. And Bailey's running to the sort of empty side of the formation, which was their left. And that was a physical end of the run there by a big wide receiver. It's a second and two now for the Bombers from their own 48. Caleros has Oliveira to his left. Now Oliveira right behind Caleros, and there's a ton of movement by the Bombers receivers, and it was all smoke and mirrors because it was a handoff to Oliveira, and he goes straight ahead and has just enough for the first down across the Winnipeg 50. 
Well, we've seen a lot of Taylor Powell. They've scored on their three drives, like you've said. Seen some great catches, some good runs. From the Blue Bombers, we've seen that one drive where they took down big, big chunks getting down the field to that touchdown there. But we're seeing a Ticat defense who's, uh, you know, I would say almost winning that, that, that battle of, uh, on their, their phase of the game. Bombers getting close to midfield. Ball on the far hash mark. Collateral's back to pass. He's got time. Now he's going to scramble to his right. Being chased by Casey Sales. And he'll sail the football way out of bounds and throw it away. A lot of really great cover down there. And you got a, a pressure that got back into that Blue Bomber backfield almost immediately. And Caleros gets flushed to the right. And that tight cat secondary had it all covered down. In fact, there was all... Looked like, looked like the Blue Bomber receivers weren't even on the field. It was just an empty <laughs> secondary. And uh, Claros wisely uh, sails it out of bounds. Second and 10 for the Bombers from their own 51. Tiger Cats defense looking menacing and all black with the gold numbers. Zach Claros stomps his right foot. He's in the shotgun, gets the snap, throws over the middle, wide open. Dalton what? shown, and he's hit hard by Lawrence Woods but shown a big gain inside the Hamilton 25. I think he is gonna be spotted at the Hamilton 25. Well, I think right off the bat, I thought it actually was Dalton Schoen who went off sides there. I thought, he, I thought he was a little early, and man, that was a nice hit by Lawrence Woods at the top of that route. Well, that big hit by Lawrence Woods brought to you by my insurance broker. But the Bombers, we saw earlier they answered the Tiger Cats touchdown with a touchdown to their own. They missed the convert and Tyreek McAllister ran it back for two points. There they are trying to answer another Tiger Cats score. Zach Calero steps back, throws to his left. It's a high pass and a great catch by Kenny Lawler. JB and Elliott had good coverage and he didn't come down with it. And Lawler getting in the face of the official, he is some heated right now. Well, Dalton Schoen sprints over to Lawler just to stop that uh, conversation with the refereeing crew, but they're saying it's a no catch that the ball touched the turf. It looks like a reception when you see it live, and there you go. Red flag hits the field from the Blue Bomber sidelines. Mike O'Shea the throws challenging the, the challenge. Of a completed pass. We'll review the play. And Mike O'Shea doesn't challenge a lot, but he has been pretty successful when he does. He's three for five, and we saw a replay of this one, and it looks like it probably is a catch. We will let them decide, and we'll have the answer. When we come back, it's 15-6 with 10-17 to go in the half. Tiger Cats lead. This is the Tiger Cats Audio Network. So we should have our decision. Here's referee Tom Valesi. Ruling on the field stands. Winnipeg will be challenged, charged a timeout. Wow, incomplete. Well, we just got a, a short look at it on our monitors again, and I still thought it was a reception, but there you go. This is a second. This is a big opportunity for the Ticat defense. The second and ten. Ball is on the Hamilton 25. Tiger Cats lead 15 to 6. 10 minutes to go in the opening half. Crowd getting loud at Tim Hortons Field. Jack Caleros back, pump fake. Now he throws, looking end zone, going back to Lawler, and he's got it. It's a touchdown for Kenny Lawler, and he'd much sooner have that reception than the previous one because this one's a score. Yeah. Great, uh, great route, great sell by Caleros with a really full pump fake, and then a double move, and Lawler gets the high shoulder towards the, on the right side to the back of the end zone. Great throw and catch. So Winnipeg, they're not phased by the Tiger Cats scoring on all their possessions so far. It's a three-point game right now, 15 to 12. Sergio Castillo steps up he missed his first convert attempt let's see how this one goes Tyreek McAllister is back there the convert is up and this time it's good so it makes it a 15 to 13 game a two-point game 
very close. Well, Cal Claros in the Blue Bomber offense found a little rhythm there. And uh, again, we talked about this at the top of the broadcast that 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 offense is at or near the top of most offensive statistical categories. And one of the things that that lends to is, is resilience. And, you know, a little hiccup there with uh, McAllister returning that missed extra point for two. A couple uh, forced to punt in the first quarter there, but now twice they've driven down the field and passed into the end zone. And uh, we'll see how this back and forth with Mark Washington's defense and Zach Claro's offense continues to progress. They answer the Tiger Cats field goal with a touchdown, and that gets them within two points. Still lots of time to go in the opening half. Appreciate all the listeners on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Adam V listening from Gatineau, Quebec at the Ottawa Gatineau Air Show and wants to give a shout out to his brother Matthew and his fiance Monica who are at Tim Hortons Field today and says go Tabbies. Thank you, Adam. Let us know where you're listening from at game day at TieCats.ca. Big kickoff, Tyreek McAllister takes it at his own one, and he's got a nice return developing here. He's across the 30, and now the Bombers seal him off, and he'll be just short of the 35 when he's brought down. Boy, quite the kickoff there. McAllister had to back up almost to the Ticat goal line to field that kick, and after 30 yards, it looked again like he almost was going to pop through there, but Blue Bombers are able to cover it down. Yeah, he really got that feeling. It looked dangerous. Let's see if this Tiger Cats offense can keep going here, Luke. Taylor Powell, six for eight, 84 yards. He's thrown a touchdown. James Butler has rushed for 23 yards. They'll start this drive on their own 32. Two receivers off to the left. And that's where Taylor Powell throws immediately and it's caught by Tim White. He's tackled by Winston Rose. Won't get much, a couple of yards. Well, what I liked about that, it's a little sl kind of a slip screen to Tim White, to Taylor Powell's, Powell's left, and the ball came out right away. And I, that's just a must for me on a wide receiver screen. But it was Winston Rose did an unbelievable job of taking out that space and limiting the gain. So Tiger Cats move up to their own 35. Another second down situation. Three receivers to the field side, two to the boundary side. Taylor Powell, number zero throws, completes it to Omar Bayless. He's up at the 50 and battling for yards, refusing to go down. Finally, the whistle goes. It is a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling on that 17-yard reception by Bayless. Yeah, what a great, uh, what a great, battle we've got here two quarterbacks who are converting their second downs finding a whole slew of receivers down the field Taylor Powell really really uh, owning his space in this game eight minutes to go opening half Tiger Cats lead by two they're now up to their own 52 fake handoff to James Butler pump fake two of them in fact from Taylor Powell and he keeps it himself and he'll slide at the 50 and he'll be a yard or two short of the first down Mm. Yeah, not, not a favorable spot there. I would, no. I would have been two yards ahead of that, but it'll be, it'll be second and three here. Another second down for the Tiger Cats. They're six for eight on second down conversions in the game. Lots of motion again. Omar Bayless, Terry Godwin, they come, look like they're sealing off the left side. It's a handoff to James Butler. He's hit immediately, squirts away from that attempted tackle, and then busts ahead. He needed three yards. It will be very close, and it is a first down. Presented by Active, Green and Ross, the Tiger Cats keep it rolling. James Butler gets it done. No, you love that. It looked like a broken play. You know, it looked like it was kind of dead in the backfield for a second there, and he, he kind of just shakes and wiggles his way to find a little space, and, and knowing where those sticks are, it's just a savvy play by a running back. Tiger Cats going from right to left. They're in Winnipeg territory on the 47. Fake handoff to James Butler, and across the middle to Tim White. He reached up to try to make the catch, and he could not do it. That was in a danger zone with couple of Bombers secondary right there. We've seen a lot of three receiver sets from the Ticats. They're loading up their 
protection there. They do have an interesting uh, lineup and roster today with a lot of offensive linemen and fullbacks in that they can move in their pass protection, but Taylor Powell finding his guys. That was a catchable ball to Tim White there. Brandon Alexander and Evan Holm right there for the Bombers. It's a second and 10 from the Winnipeg 47. Taylor Powell, important one here. Tim White's wide open, he makes the catch. He's inside the 30 and he's still battling for more. He won't go down either. They finally blow the whistle. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross. First down, a 20-yard reception by Tim White. Again, three receivers set, and they've got all that protection loaded up, and Taylor Powell looked very comfortable. That is forming that nice, you know, U shape around the quarterback, and he's sitting there with some space and time. Again, Tim White's speed gets Winston Rose to get running towards his own goal line. Ball on the Winnipeg 27-yard line. Hamilton trying to score again. James Butler has to make a move in the backfield. Now he'll get positive yardage. Dives ahead, and he'll be about halfway to the first down. Man, great job. I, I, RJ, you and I talked about it in Ticats this week, our podcast yesterday. The, the, I felt at times the inability for the passing and the run game to be going at the same time. They are complementing each other right now. Ball's moved up to the 21. It's a second and four, six yards on that James Butler run. And wide open on the near sideline. It's Tim White again. He's across the 10, down to the five. It's another first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Kids keep it rolling. I just love the fact that Tim White caught that short out route to the left side and did not go out of bounds. He planted his feet again and took an angle back into the field and probably got seven, eight extra yards and he could have easily just, just ended that play, but he fights for more. First and goal from the four. Tiger Cats have scored on every possession so far, trying to keep that streak going. James Butler lined up in the eye right behind Taylor Powell. He gets the handoff, goes straight ahead, breaks a tackle. He's still going and finally brought down. Maybe got to the one. We'll see if they spot him that close maybe they'll spot it at the two but he got a couple of yards well it's worth worth noting again this is an entirely different looking offense here we, we've had three receivers on the field for almost this entire drive down the field we saw it in the first quarter as well that's not what we've been used to we're seeing four and five receiver sets uh for the majority of a game this drive looks looks different i mean you've got bayless tim white and godwin out there as receivers and that's it second and goal from the two Taylor Powell takes a look to his left. It's a handoff to James Butler again, going to his right. He got down to the goal line. It's a touchdown. Tiger Cats, James Butler, his eighth of the season. Wow. That was just progressing down the field, never taking a tackle for a loss, never taking a negative play, not taking any incompletions on that drive just taking it as it comes and each player taking a big chunk of yards when it was their turn to do it. Man, it just looks like a, it really, you know what the word comes to mind? It looks like a mature offense. That's just, that's just controlling the clock and controlling the ball. Tiger Cats talked about it all season. A lot of new players. It takes time to come together. Maybe we're seeing that now. And earlier we mentioned Winnipeg, good team. They answer a score while well, Hamilton, a good team too. They answer that Winnipeg touchdown with one of their own. Mark Leggio comes out for the convert. White the snap, Bedvik the hold, and Leggio the successful convert. The Tiger Cats lead the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in this game with 3.23 to go in the half. It's 22 to 13 Tiger Cats. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Welcome back. Tim Hortons Field is buzzing this afternoon. Loving what they're seeing from their Tiger Cats. It's a 22-13 lead over the Bombers with 3.23 to go in the opening half. There's been seven possessions combined. There's only been one punt. Six scoring possessions. Tiger Cats would love to get a stop here. Mark Leggio, the kickoff. Oh, and a bit of confusion there by the Bombers, who was going to come up with that football? Johnny Augustine stepped right in front of Jamal Parker, and he caught it cleanly, and he'll bring it up 
to the 40. Well, we've got the makings of uh, a shootout, kind of the continuation of, of second half of the Hamilton Ottawa game last week, which after a six to three first half turned into a to a volleying of touchdowns back and forth. And that's what we've got here with Zach Caleros and Taylor Powell both doing a great job of operating their way down the field. Don't now, it's, now it's Zach's turn. Don't want to jinx it, Luke, but we haven't seen flags. Great point, and you've got a, a Blue Bomber team who is very good at avoiding penalties, and Ticats who have gone back and forth with their ability to avoid flags. Tiger Cats took 140 yards in penalties in that week one meeting against Winnipeg. Hand off to Brady Oliveira. He has had to work for every yard. Simone Lawrence makes the tackle, and that's about a four-yard gain for the Winnipeg running back. So it'll be a second down when we come back. We are at the three-minute warning, 2.52 to go in the half, and it's been a great opening half for the Tiger Cats. They lead 22 to 13. You're listening to the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Welcome back. 2.52 to go in the opening half. Tiger Cats have a nine-point lead up 22 to 13. Want to say hello to Colin and Carmel Price, Dan and Deb McLean, Stephen Lorraine. They're all listening from Bristol, England. Go Cats, go. Tiger Cats trying to get a stop here at second and six. Bombers going from left to right. They're on their own 45. Zach Caleros going deep. He's got an open receiver. The pass is there. It's caught by Dembski. Chris Edwards made the tackle. And now that's four of eight completions by Zach Caleros in this game that have gone for over 25 yards. Yeah, they've got the, the deep strike going. That was cover zero from the Tie Cats, and what you're doing there is counting on your pressure to disrupt the, the, the passing game. You've got to get there quick. Caleros, you know, very savvy. He, he continues to, to lose depth in his pocket, buys time, and just waits for one of his guys to, to get the high shoulder. This time it's Dembski on Chris Edwards and just a great throw. Oh, just <laughs> dropped it in there. A great throw. You can't say anything else. 56 yards. Dembski got behind coverage and just let it land in his arms. They're on the Hamilton nine. Oliveira. Oh, he was cutting off to his left and he stumbled and that gave Dexter Lawson a chance to quickly get a touch on him and make sure he stayed down. But Oliveira brought it down to the five. You know, Oliveira on track, or on pace, I should say, for uh, a legendary uh, uh, season. Um, and that run game has been really productive for them. But that's the thing about good teams. They've got they've got answers on both sides tonight. This Ticat defense has done a great job against the run. But like you said, that deep ball is deadly. You've got to find a, a way to stop Zach Caleros from, the, from taking up those big yards all at once. Tiger Cats have some inexperience in that secondary without Richard Leonard and Tunde Adelike. They're both injured. Here's a second and goal from the five for the Bombers. Zach Caleros under wow. pressure. He's sacked. Stavros Katsantonis, the safety. A huge play. I love watching Stavros Katsantonis play football. I just absolutely love it. That You just can't ask for more. A tackle for a loss is like too good to dream of on that play and you absolutely force, force, force the field goal unit onto the field. But Stavros Katsantonis a week ago with one of the best, the best defensive tackles I've seen when he, when he had an unbelievable effort on the one yard line. And then right here, perfect timing on a blitz from free safety. And you could tell Zach Claros was not ready. He did not see that coming and that pressure took him by surprise. Here's a 22 yard field goal attempt for Sergio Castillo. There's the hold, the kick, and it is good from 22 yards. So Winnipeg gets a field goal, and after that big play of 56 yards to Nick Dembski, it's a bit of a win for the Tiger Cats defense, holding them to a field goal, and it's a 22 to 16 lead. How about Stavros Katsantonis? Back-to-back -back games with six tackles, back-to-back -back games with an interception, also had a fumble recovery in there. Now he gets a quarterback sack and a big one to hold Winnipeg to three points. Yeah, I just, I, I've just been, he's, he's an inspired football player. You can just tell the way that he carries himself on the field. And, it, you know, you see this in an offensive player, the big time guys, they, they make the play in the key moment. 
And Katsantonis, as a defensive player, has that same knack. Like, when you need it to happen, oftentimes it's number 30 making it happen. Absolutely. Minute 27 to go in the half. Tiger Cats lead by six. They'll begin this drive on their own 40. Taylor Powell looks to his right. Nothing there. Now he's going to run up the middle. Does not slide. He tries to get some positive yardage, and it looks like he did. Yard or two. Yeah, hard earned, and he and that that kind of a scary play to watch. He's got two blue bombers who sort of fall on his ankles, and it's sort of a classic uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, accidental injury there. But he pops off the turf and uh, ready to see if we can do a second and nine here, like we've seen happen already a few times tonight. Tiger Cats have been really good on converting second downs. Ten for twelve in the game. This is a tough one, as Luke mentioned. Nine yards to go from their own 41. Taylor Powell under pressure, running to his right, looking downfield, completes the pass to Omar Bayless, but it's short of the first down. Now he's battling to get to the first down, and the Bombers don't let it happen. Let's see where this ball gets spotted and how close he is. Omar Bayless, great catch, short of the first down, like you said, but. Love how Coulter Wood Manzi sprints over to that <laughs> open field area that's unknown to him out, out past the numbers, but trying his best to push that pile. And the refs whistle it dead too soon. Did you like that as a receiver when the offensive lineman would give you a little boost? <laughs> yeah, so long as he you know uses his hands and not his helmet. Or <laughs> <laughs> You're getting helmet right. from both sides. First time that Corey Vedvik has had to punt in this game. He's standing on his own... 33-yard line. Tiger Cats lead 22 to 6, letting as much time run off the clock. There's 30 seconds to go. Kicks it at the far numbers. There's a flag. First flag of the game. Jamal Parker returns it up near the 30. Well, not it's not in the no yard, not in a no yards area here. But it looks like it might be holding, you know, as as the coverage unit ran down the field we'll see what what uh, how this settles out here first penalty of the game doesn't come until there's 27 seconds left in the opening half Tom Valesi the the referee he's been anonymous so far in the Ticats audio network this afternoon here's his call illegal interference Hamilton number 43 10-yard penalty via first down so Hamilton's the, was the punt team, obviously. Illegal interference. Har I, I did not see that live. Carthel Flowers Lloyd was in the coverage unit on the to the outside, like in the gunner position, out to the right side. All sorts of ways you can go wrong out there. I mean, you, you know, if, uh, holding can go on both sides, you know, and and yeah. and uh, hands in the wrong place. One thing we know, Carthel Flowers Lloyd will be talked about at some point on special teams, usually for a, a positive play. Again, we appreciate everybody listening on the Ticats Audio Network. Tracy and Jeff aren't at the trailer this year. Tracy's listening from Bermuda, and Jeff is listening from North Bay. Go Ticats, go. You can let us know where you're listening from. Game day at Ticats.ca. Awesome. I think Tracy England. got the better deal there. Yeah, that's true. But we've got England, Bermuda. North Bay. <laughs> but Bermuda would be nice right now. Don't get me wrong. The Bombers, not much time to go in the half. Caleros was looking deep. Instead, he'll go a little more shallow. But it is complete again to Nick Dembski, who's been his favorite target. And he eyed that first down marker and ran right for it. Looks like he'll be a little bit short, though. Okay, 20 seconds left. Good job by Dembski getting out of bounds. You've got to get probably 20 to 20, 25 yards here for field goal range. Caleros throws immediately. It's a low pass caught by Rashid Bailey. Nick Dembski, by the way, 121 yards receiving in the opening half. 16 seconds on the clock. Tiger Cats lead by six, getting close to halftime. Winnipeg's up to their own 48, getting close to midfield. Caleros look deep again. Instead, he'll pitch it. Kind of one of those sidearm underhand pitches. Look for Brady Oliveira, but he couldn't make the catch, and it's incomplete. Well, the clock's going to stop here. So nine seconds left, and at this point, they've got. If you if if Sergio Castillo is good from 50, you know you've still got uh, 17 yards to gain to get here. So 20 or so to get 
this would have to be a really, really well-called play, great throw, catch, and get out of bounds if they can make this happen. The steals long this year, 53 yards. Caleros back to pass again. It's a deep pass. It's caught again by Bailey's hit hard by Jameer Thurman. But the football is wow. at the Hamilton 39 or 40, well within Castillo's range. Four seconds left. They do have a timeout. That was just that's just what I said. It was the perfect play call. Great throw, great reception. And great job by Bailey to hang on to that after Jameer Thurman hit him hard. It was a great tackle at the top of that, yes. So this is going to be a 48-yard field goal attempt for Sergio Castillo. He has only had two field goal misses this season. The kick is up, and it is wide left. He missed it. And Tyreek McAllister ran a convert back. Here he goes again. He's gone to the outside. He's up to the 40. He's up to midfield. Oh. And he is finally tackled just on Winnipeg's side of the football field. There's no time left on the clock. Tyreek McAllister, he's been electric in this game and almost made it a pretty exciting end of the half, but it was a very good first half for the Tiger Cats, Luke, a 22 to 16 lead on the Blue Bombers. Yeah, and now another storyline's going to start with the special teams, and there's some points that Winnipeg has left out there. 47 yards is no gimme, of course, uh, but uh, almost, like you said, Tyreek McAllister almost changing the game again uh, there uh, looked nearly like he was going to break through that, but what a, what a great game we have here, and what I when I ended the when we ended the broadcast in uh, Ottawa a week ago, I thought to myself, I'm just excited to see more Taylor Powell. Like I just want to see this offense continue to progress. They are, and they're looking creative. They're looking different. Three receiver sets, uh, three zero sets, focusing on letting those playmakers uh, progress and get their routes developed there. And we've got a really great second half in store here. He's picking apart a, a Winnipeg defense that has been together a long time and is, yeah. is very good. So Taylor Powell has had a strong game, 11 for 14, 147 yards. Tiger Cats lead at the half, 22 to 16. Tiger Cats at the half, presented by My Insurance Broker with Bubba O'Neill and Andy Fantuz, is next on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Available live at listen.tiecats.ca and on the Ticats All Access app. This is the Ticats Audio Network. Welcome back to Tim Hortons Field. The shadows creeping onto the field and the kickoff from Sergio Castillo. Tyreek McAllister gets it, runs to his left. He's getting to the outside. Evan Holm, he is fast. He's able to track down McAllister, and if he didn't have the speed he has, McAllister might have turned the corner and turned that into something even bigger. He'll be just a little bit short of the 45. Looks like they'll spot him at the 43. Yeah, able to return that to the 43, which is exactly what he did to start the game, a return just past their 40, and Hamilton is receiving again. So... Winnipeg had won the coin toss to start the game deferred and then is now selected to kick off so that they can have the wind in the fourth quarter. So the Tiger Cats are going from left to right in all black with the gold numbers. Winnipeg gold pants, white tops, gold helmets. Tiger Cats with the wind in this third quarter. They lead 22 to 16. Play action, wow. now pass to Terry Godwin on that far sideline and he makes a fingertip catch. That was awesome. In the first quarter, we talked about Zach Caleros throwing the ball prior to his receiver making the break. Right there, Taylor Powell let that ball go. Terry Godwin was still sprinting downfield on what's this, on the stem of the route, we say. Then he broke out, shaved his route, and that ball was right there in his face mask. What a great timing and reception by Terry Godwin. Tucker Katz keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. They're up to their own 54. Hand off to James Butler, he runs to the left, and the Bombers were right with him the whole way, and don't give him much, if anything. Well, second and tens, this will be maybe second and nine, or just, that's just part of the Ticats offense now. Yeah, that it's we've routine. Seen. <laughs> it's routine. <laughs> I think we had 19 of 24 second down conversions across the board between the two teams in that first half. That's a very, that's a couple of really productive offenses. 
Let's see if the Tiger Cats can do it. They gave James Butler a yard. So it's second and nine right from midfield. Tiger Cats heading toward the sun. Left to right. Taylor Powell back to pass. He's with the wind. He's going to have to run. He's across midfield to 50. He's looking at that first down marker, and he dives for it. He was beelining for it the whole way. And let's see where they spot this football. They're saying it is a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. What a run. What a run. Yeah, he he charted that angle with just enough timing and space to get to move the chains. Lost the play cards in his armband. They came flying out. Oh, on the, no. Good thing it was the Ticat side. <laughs> yeah, the, don't let Winnipeg get those. Yeah, but he was fired up after making that first down on his legs. And again, Ticats are rolling into Blue Bomber territory now. He had his longest run of the season last week against Ottawa, 20 yards. Now on the Winnipeg 45, opening drive of the second half, six point lead for the Tiger Cats. James Butler, he's trying. He got to the line of scrimmage, stopped, tried to stutter step, and he'll dive ahead for a few yards, but it's gonna be another second and long here. Gain of two, second and eight. So I'll get about one and a half yards. Taylor Powell, excellent first half. Four receivers to his left. That's the field side. James Butler also to his left. Lone receiver on the right is Tim White. The snap was bobbled. Now he's scrambling. Winnipeg got some hands on him. He stayed on his feet, throwing deep, running for it. And Omar Bayless couldn't make the catch. He couldn't make the catch, but there's two flags. And you called it, Luke. <laughs> you called it. Well, what it, uh, this play started with. Pass interference. Winnipeg number 17. Point of foul. Automatic. First down. Started with a near sack in the backfield. Taylor Powell slips away from that and escapes out of the pocket to the left. Eyes downfield and throws. A Zach Caleros-esque deep ball, and that was really either for the Blue Bombers, that play was totally scrambled and, and very late in the concepts, and it was pretty much take a pass interference or or give up a touchdown. And Bayless near near reception still, but what a play for the Ticats. And that was Willie Jefferson, fourth in the league in sacks, who got a hand on Taylor Powell, and Powell wouldn't go down and made this happen. It's on the three-yard line, first and goal from the three. And off goes to James Butler, off to his left, and he's very close. He's going to be a little bit short, though. Tiger Cats, no doubt, will have a couple of more cranks at it. Ball will be on the one. Second and goal from the one yard line. And as we've said, RJ, not all penalties are created equal. Some are more costly and more impactful than others. What a great opportunity here for the Tiger Cats. That was the first penalty of the game for Winnipeg. Under center, it's Kai Loxley, and he will dive off to his right. It's a touchdown. Kai Loxley, the third string quarterback, comes in for the keeper and gets the touchdown, and the Tiger Cats pick up in the second half where they left off in the first. Scoring points. It's a big touchdown. So, so interesting here. I go back to the decision by the Blue Bombers. So they gave up the ball here and elected to kick off to start this second half. Well, we've seen a volley back and forth with the Ticats keeping the lead since the start of the game. That decision allows the Ticats now to extend that lead. That half ended with a six point uh, lead there. And now they're gonna extend this to what will be 13 pending this extra point here. Kai Loxley, second touchdown of the season. Mark Leggio. Successful on the convert. It is a 29 to 16 lead. That tie catch touchdown presented by Turkstra Lumber. Great start to the second half for the Tiger Cats. Now they lead by 13. Winnipeg will get the ball when we come back on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Great to have you with us. Tim Hortons Field is alive and having a great time. A 29 16 lead for the Tiger Cats early in the third quarter. Still lots of time. Six drives for the Tiger Cats offense in this game. They've scored three touchdowns, two field goals. They've only punted once. 
That kick down to the 15, and that wow. kickoff coverage team has been excellent, and they'll limit that return inside the 30. Jamal Parker couldn't get much. Jonathan Kongbo flying down the field. It was actually, in part, Les Moreau, who is a blue bomber, had a part in that tackle there. And sometimes on special teams, there's just so many moving bodies, you end up getting in the way of your own return, man. But, man, that was a violent kickoff. Look, this is a, a big series for the defense. It is. Need to stop Winnipeg, start pulling ahead on the scoreboard. Zach Caleros and the Bombers, they've done this before. We've seen it in this game. They answer a tie catch score. Lots of motion. Three receivers end up going to the right. Now they're all over the place, and looking back into the sun is Drew Wolitarski. And Jameer Thurman, from his middle linebacker position, comes out to the 49-yard line to make that tackle. Another big gain for the Bombers. The Blue Bombers, when they get their receivers downfield, it's it's like everyone's on these big arcing uh, pass patterns, going to the wide corners and big spaces of the field. It's kind of, it reminds me of June Jones' offense, honestly, a little bit. Just a lot of guys have a chance to make a big play on it at any, at any given moment. 21 yards up to their own 49. They'll hand it off, and there's a hole for Oliveira. This is his biggest run of the game. He's into Hamilton territory, and he's brought down just as he passes the Tiger Cats 45. It's another Winnipeg first down, and they're out of the sunshine, heading from right to left. They're in the shadows now, and they're gonna play quick, just barely getting lined up. On that far side was Kenny Lawler. Caleros, his throw behind Dembski. Tried to make a one-handed catch, but couldn't do it. It goes incomplete. Yeah, that was a, I mean, they are, that was a, they sprinted back to the line. They probably called two plays in the previous huddle. Sometimes you can do that and you're just gonna plan on executing very quickly, but good job by the Ticat defense responding. You're trying to catch the defense off guard to do that, but the Ticats covered that down very well. Tim Horton's field goes up a couple of decibels on this second and 10 from the Tiger Cats, 44. This would be a big stop. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Caleros drops back, he's under pressure. Running to his left, stops, throws deep. Dembski can't come up with a catch. It's incomplete. Dexter Lawson, Jr., the rookie in coverage on the dangerous Dembski. Really interesting, it's a 13-point game right now. This is a very challenging field goal here, and they're not going to attempt it as their punt team takes the field, the Blue Bombers. But, you know, even five more yards there, short of the first down, you can move as the Blue, the Blue Bombers could have moved in the field goal range. Instead, they took a shot down the field. Pretty, pretty low probability throw. For all the deep balls we've seen from the Blue Bombers, that was just a shot up in the dark there. Really great job, Ticat defense, to get the Blue Bombers off the field, no points. So Bombers chose to have the win for the fourth quarter. Probably would have tried a field goal if they had the wind. Sheehan's kick, pretty good one. Goes out of bounds at the eight yard line. So the Tiger Cats will have their toughest starting field position of the game, but the offense is on a roll. We'll see what they can do. There's 9.13 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a break. Tiger Cats lead 29 to 16. This is the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Beautiful evening in Hamilton. About 22 degrees. R.J. Broadhead with Luke Tasker. The Tiger Cats have the worst starting field position of any team in this football game. 9.13 to go in the third quarter. They'll begin from their own eight. Want to say hello to a couple other listeners. Jeff Lowe listening in Shreveport, Louisiana. Likes what he hears. Go Tiger Cats. A uh, couple, Sheila and Damian Borelli. They're driving in Sonoma Valley, California. California. Oski Wee Wee. Season ticket holders on a little vacation. Well, you're missing a good one, but glad you're listening. Game day at Ticats.ca. Here's the Tiger Cats. Taylor Powell dropped back to the end zone and got out of the end zone quickly because the pressure was coming. And he'll lose a couple of yards. Got it out to the six. Well, you mentioned worst field position uh, at, at, for, by either team in this game, and man, Blue Bombers trying to be take advantage of that. They brought pressure there. That was nearly a game-changing play there. They were ball hawking 
on Taylor Powell coming down on his arms and almost popped that ball loose. Ticats fortunate to be in second down here. Well, second and 12. So this is their longest second down conversion that they're attempting from their own six. And it's a short pass in front of Omar Bayless. Bounced in front of him. Didn't have a chance. And the field position battle will take a shift here as Hamilton will be forced to punt for just the second time in the game. That's right. We just had, we just had, uh, you know, e each drive seemed to be starting from the 30 or 40 yard line in that first half. And now Blue Bombers with an excellent punt there. Ticats unable to dig themselves out. And Vedvik's got both his goal posts right in front of his face as he tries to punt this ball out of the end zone. Yeah, that's got to be intimidating. Vedvik is about 10 yards deep in his own end zone. Punt. And he does punt the football with the wind. It's a good punt. That sends Jamal Parker back to his own 50. And he tries to cut to his right now up the middle, and the Tiger Cats did pretty well. He'll get just across midfield, maybe to the Hamilton 53 or 54. We'll see where they spot it, but punting 10 yards deep in your own end zone, that's about as good as you could expect. Yeah, uh, unbelievably uh, big punt. Good job covering it down. It almost looked like they were calling for trainers on the field, but everyone's popped up and running off. That's, you know, it's a 13-point game. I wondered if we were going to see them take a safety and try to be able to yeah. flip the field back on Winnipeg. They decided to put Vedvik out there and actually kick it. And like you said, yes, it's on the Hamilton side of center line here, but you can't ask for much better. That was an impressive cover down, and uh, Blue Bombers not yet in field goal range and have some work to do. 56-yard punt, 6-yard return. Ball's on the... Hamilton 52, so pretty good spot. Zach Calaros running to his right, fake to pitch, still running, pump fake, and he's still running. He'll take it right out of bounds. And he jumps over the advertising sign on that far side. Had so much momentum. Pretty agile, your old teammate. Oh, uh, yeah. He, uh, he used to joke that he, they told him when he was coming up here that he would be great for the CFL because he can run, and then once he got up here, you know, nobody wanted him to run. They just wanted him to stay, stay in the pocket and throw, and that's such that's the way it goes, I guess, for, for quarterbacks. But well, second, he's too good at throwing. I guess, yeah. <laughs> so second and six from the 48. Bombers in this third quarter. We're midway through the third quarter. They're against the wind. They wanted the wind in the fourth quarter. Caleros throws quickly and completes it to Dalton Schoen. He has been a favorite second down target of Zach Caleros. And this is another conversion for the Bombers. They're inside the Hamilton 40. Yeah, a little, we called it a dog or an Oscar concept. And Dalton Schoen just gets up to five yards. He's, he does a little stutter. And then the receivers outside of him have cleared out that that flat area and he's able to just turn out and balls right on him tiger cats lead by 13 bombers are moving the football started with great field position here's shown again catches it at the 30 and kenneth george jr and simone lawrence team up to keep him a little bit short of the first down but the bombers are only inches away you're right maybe yeah a little bit less than a yard Looks like Caleros is off the field here. We'll see if the Bombers run one of these uh, second and short, uh, sort of fake short yardage here. The ones you love. Yes. Dakota Prukop under center. Tiger Cats have been really good on short yardage, but Prukop gets the first down and more. He's across the 25, and a flag goes flying. Haven't been many flags in this game. Right at the snap of the ball, probably somebody's probably jumped the snap here. Yeah. Offside, Hamilton number 99. That penalty is declined. First down. Jared Hewitt. Ball now on the inside the 25 on the Hamilton 23 yard line. Tiger Cats lead 29 to 16. Just over six minutes to go in the third quarter. Zach Caleros directing traffic and the receivers are all over the place. Try to keep track of that. It's a pitch to Oliveira trying to get to the outside and JB and Elliott tracks him down and limits him uh, to about two or three yards as he pushes him out of bounds. 
again with just the interesting run. I mean, you didn't really know who was going to get that ball. There's there's their wide receivers sort of motion in these like kind of angular ways, and all of a sudden, what looks like you're setting up a pass concept, and they they have this unique way of getting their ball carriers runs from the backfield. Good job by JV and Elliott to take the space out. There's a second and seven now from the Hamilton 20. Crowd cranks it up at Tim Hortons Field, trying to make it difficult for the Bombers. Three receivers to the boundary side. That's to the left of Caleros. He throws that way. It's picked up. It's intercepted. Malik Carney <laughs> with the interception. That's his first of the season, and he brings it up just short of the Hamilton 50. What a huge defensive play. It looked like the Bombers were going to get sure points, but the defense gets the takeaway. Tiger Cats take over. We'll take a break with 5.28 to go in the third quarter. Tiger Cats lead 29 to 16. A big interception by Malik Carney. You're listening to the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Tiger Cats have it rolling in all aspects. Bombers moving the ball and a terrific interception by Malik Carney and brings it back 34 yards to give Taylor Powell and the offense great starting field position. They'll begin from their own 49. First turnover of the game is a big one. Tiger Cats trying to add to their lead. They're up by 13, just over five minutes to go in the third quarter, and Taylor Powell's changing the play. Looking to his left to the receivers, then to his right, shouting instructions. Back to pass, and he'll make a short pass to Tyreek McAllister. He's across midfield, spins, and dives. He'll be really close to a first down. Really quick out of the backfield. McAllister, I love McAllister and Tim White. They can both gain that you know horizontal separation really quickly, and if they get the ball in their hands fast, like they just did, can get out there very, very uh, effectively. Taylor Powell went through a rolodex of options before he finally checked it down to McAllister, and it worked out. Here's a second and two from the Winnipeg 53. They just crossed midfield, and James Butler gets it, and he's battling yeah. he is a powerhouse got to the 50 that was enough and then he scrounged out another couple of yards it's a first down presented by active green and ross the tiger can't keep it rolling uh, same thing we've talked about in the first half tons of three receiver sets and it's totally different uh than than the tie cats these winnipeg blue bombers were preparing for i mean this is just not something that the tie cats have shown very much this season Ball on the Winnipeg, 47. Tiger Cats going from left to right. They've got just under four minutes left in this third quarter with the win. Let's see if they can get some more points. Hand off to James Butler again. Fakes to the right, goes to his left. He bounces around a couple of times finally. Winnipeg brings him down. A lot happened in that three or four yard rush. Winnipeg's not giving Butler much. He's working for everything he's been able to get in this football game. Up near 50 yards rushing. Tiger Cats in a huddle right on their Tiger logo. At midfield. Now they'll step up. Balls on the Winnipeg 44. They're still in the shadows. They want to get into the sunshine. The end zone they want is still full sun. Taylor Powell. In the shotgun, back to pass, throws to his right, and Keandre Smith goes up and makes the catch. And it's another first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Great job by Keandre Smith to make that jump up and reach the ball at its high point and then hang on to it as he gets banged on the sidelines there. We've seen that same catch from Tim White twice today. We're just an isolated, deep curl route. And Powell with just great timing in that David Beard, Revenberg, those guys up front giving the, giving Taylor Powell the ability to look calm and stay cool. First catch of the game for Keandre Smith. Six players have caught a pass. Taylor Powell fakes a pitch, rolls to his right. Sean Thomas Erlington, <laughs> he fell. He had to dive to get the football. He got back up, and oh boy, he just put a foot out of bounds. How about that? No bomber touched him as he dove to get the football, so he got up and ran. And took this ball inside the 20. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. Yeah, how special. He is, he slips out of the formation to the right. Taylor Powell running to the right gets him the ball quick, but he, he barrel rolls on the turf 
pops up and breaks a pair of tackles to get the first down. <laughs> Fun to watch. Tiger Cats have hit the sunshine heading off to the south end zone. Just over two minutes ago, third quarter. Omar Bayless faked the waggle. Here's the snap. Powell wants to pass. Let's that wave of bombers go by. He's running to his right. He's not going to pass. He's going to hang on to the football. And he goes out of bounds. And it might have been, there is a flag on Cramdy, it looks like. Did he give Powell a shove? The flag was sort of back in the defensive secondary. It was hard to see as Powell was going out of bounds on the Ticat sideline. Contact. Hamilton number one. Sorry, Winnipeg number one. I was going to say. Hop to this <laughs> to the goal. First down. Hey. Tom Valesi quickly correcting that, realizing yeah. he's at Tim Hortons Field. Right, right. <laughs> Crowded, let him know quick. So effectively, it's that's sort of like holding on a receiver downfield without the ball being in the air. And uh, as Taylor Powell escaped the pocket, there was just a lot of movement. Classic time to draw that penalty. Receivers trying to break off their routes and go in a different direction, and re defenders just holding on a little too tight. Winnipeg two penalties, both very costly. Ball on the Winnipeg nine. First and goal from the nine, and swings it out to James Butler. He gets to the outside, tries to <laughs> jump, but he's basically caught in midair by Evan Holm and pushed out of bounds. <laughs> well, great job. Butler did get the edge on that, on that outside defender there. But like you said, Evan's in, in, in a really great job in pursuit there. Sort of carries Butler out of bounds. <laughs> well, we've seen James Butler hurdle players before and probably thought Holm was going to go lower with that hit, but he stayed high. So the ball still on the nine. No gain. Second and goal from the nine. Tiger Cats trying for their second touchdown of the third quarter. Taylor Powell back to pass. Pretty good protection. Throws end zone. It's picked off. Winnipeg picks it off. And... That's Evan Holm again. Yeah, too much. Powell, Powell tried to force that one in there right between the goal posts to the center back of the end zone. But not a great decision. He'd like to have that one back. Holm was in really good position there. Evan Holm came in second in tackles on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And a couple of big plays there, one on James Butler and making that interception to keep the Tiger Cats away from getting points. So no turnovers, a lot of offense, and then all of a sudden, back-to-back -back interceptions. Isn't that amazing? Both both quarterbacks with an errant throw that steals points away from their team, but they trade it back and forth. It's unusual you see that. I mean, the, the, the both turnovers not leading to any advantage for either team. Really, it's just another swing and field position. Unfortunately, that interception in the end zone also gives up all the yardage you gained past your 30 yard line. It's kind of like, uh, it's actually kind of more costly than just like penalties. Not all turnovers created equal, and that one is a pretty bad one. Not much time to go with the win, minute seven. So Winnipeg will try to hang on to this ball. 29 to 16, Tiger Cats lead. How are you feeling about that lead, Luke? Well, they're playing great. They're playing good enough to hold on to a lead. They're playing good enough to score more points. I said to you at the uh, before the start of this half, I, I said, which team's going to make the crucial error of, of, of turning the ball over? Well, now they both have done it, and it's back to equal, and we're sort of in this uh, back and forth uh, of Caleros and Powell here. Diana is listening to the Ticats Audio Network from Alberta, loving the gameplay, loving the Ticats, and unfazed by Winnipeg, she says, hoping they can keep the lead. So far, so good. How about Glenn? He's harvesting canola north of Edmonton, Alberta. Nice. So a couple of Albertans listening to the Ticats. Appreciate you. Game day at Ticats.ca. Beautiful, lovely yellow fields of the canola come harvest time. Just over a minute to go in the third quarter. Winnipeg taking over from their own 30. Play action, and then Caleros just dumps it over to Dalton Schoen. Katz and Tonis in on the tackle. That'll keep him a few yards short of the first down. Oh, maybe not a few, Luke. Maybe <laughs> a few inches. Yes, there you go. 
We'll see. Zach Claros leaves the field here for a second and short for Winnipeg. Dakota Prukop was successful on a short yardage situation. There he is under center. Tiger Cats dig in, goes the exact same way, off to the left. He's still on his feet. Jameer Thurman has a hold of him. Cats and Tonis, he's going after the ball, and he couldn't get it loose. So that's the danger. Peru Cop showing some strength because Cats and Tonis was pulling at that football. It is a Winnipeg first down. This game is just such a perfect example of the of how how damaging turnovers are to your drive and both these offensive bought offenses earned all these yardage with great plays great second efforts Sean Thomas Erlington with a big play and it all can get negated just with one mistake this will be the last play of the third quarter looked like Bombers might have been offside on the way goal and the ball's up in yeah. the air it's picked up Simone Lawrence he dove and intercepted it it was up in the air, might have been Katz and Tonis who tipped it, and Simone dove, and they're saying no. They're saying no, he didn't make the catch. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. That's the end of the third quarter. Well, that's going to get looked at. We're through three quarters. Tiger Cats lead 29 to 16, and we'll see if there's a challenge, and we'll see what happens with that. Play. Did Simone Lawrence get an interception? The answers when we return. Tiger Cats lead after three, 29 to 16. This is the Tiger Cats Audio Network. You might hear some boos from the crowd. Tom Valesi just made the call after Coach O did challenge. They said it was an incomplete pass. He challenged Simone Lawrence diving. What a great effort to try to intercept that football, but they took a look at it. They said it is an incomplete pass. So Bombers keep the football. They're on. Their own 49, and it's second and 10. They're with the win now for the fourth quarter. They're going from left to right. Tiger Cats in all black. Big second down here. Tiger Cats lead 29 to 16. We're now in the fourth quarter. Caleros under pressure, stays in the pocket, throws deep. That is picked <laughs> up. It's well, Stavros Cats and Tonis. His third interception in as many games. He's all over the place again. Holding Winnipeg number six. Okay, there was a flag in the backfield that had, had Ticket fans a little worried there. Penalty decline, interception stands, but I don't even think Stavros Katsonis was down. I, the whistle got blown, but a really, really poor decision by Zach Caleros there to put that down the middle. Katzenta, he's, he's got a knack for it. He's got a knack for the football. Yes. It's in his defense, that middle secondary uh, for, of his free safety position. Stavros Katzentonis, all he needed was an opportunity. Three what a play. Three traded turnovers in a row here. You've got, you've got Zach Caleros, Taylor Powell, and Zach Caleros again. And here we go. Offense back on the field for the Tie Cats in their own end and a chance to flip the field here. Stavros Katz and Tonis now leading the Tiger Cats in interceptions with four, and as mentioned, three of them coming in the last three games. Taylor Powell, great play action to James Butler, and then he rolls to his right, throws to Tim White. It's a short pass, and the Bombers were right there, but there is a flag. We went a, almost a whole half with no flags. Now we're getting quite a few. No intercept, no turnovers, I should say, either in that first yeah. half. And now it's every drive is ending in a turnover in bizarre fashion. Right after the challenge and the near Simone Lawrence interception, next, the very next play as the quarter changes, Katz and Tonis get, gets one back for Taylor Powell's offense. We'll see how this settles out. Tom Valesi, the referee. There's no flag on the play. Okay. Okay, long discussion for that. Caleros has been picked off in two of his last three passes and almost picked off by Simone. That was, that was going to be downfield blocking, and I think they determined that the pass was behind the line of scrimmage and that the block was legal. Okay. Quick discussions from the officials. Three receiver set again. I'm loving watching this different uh, style here. Ball on the 25. 
One receiver to the right, the boundary side. That's where Taylor Powell looks, throws that direction, completes the pass. It's going to be a first down wow. to Terry Godwin, and he gets away from Demario Houston and turns it into bonus yards. He's up almost to the Tiger Cats 50. It's a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Wow, what a neat, what a neat play. Single receiver to the right is Terry Godwin. Gets the catch at the first down markers and then splits his defenders for an extra 10, 12 yards maybe. Just a great determination to get as many yards as he possibly can. Tiger Cats now up to their own 48. Heading from right to left into the wind in this fourth quarter. They have a 13-point lead. Having a nice long drive to take some time off the clock would be huge. Taylor Powell watches Tim White head off to the right. Hands off to James Butler. Pretty good run for Butler. It's been very difficult to get much. Winnipeg is clogged up the middle, but he ends up with about four yards on that carry. Early fourth quarter, Tim Hortons Field. Pleasant evening in Hamilton. And the best home performance of the season so far from the black and gold. Here's a second and six. Balls on the Hamilton 52. Taylor Powell fakes a pass to his right, and then he gets grabbed around his waist and threw the football incomplete. He got rid of it, though. Yeah, it looked to me like, you know, that was a legal incomplete pass, meaning not intentional. And it, and it is going to stand that way as Vedvik has to take the field. This is a great opportunity here, though, for, for the Ticats to just flip the field position. And with all the scoring that we've seen, that third quarter was just filled with a field position battle and, and, and you know, fueled by a couple turnovers. And got to make Zach Caleros go a long distance if he can. Corey Vedvik. Standing on his 37-yard line, he'll be punting into the wind. Jamal Parker back for Winnipeg. Bedvik tried to take as much time off the clock as possible, just got the punt away, and it's a great punt. Into the wind, sends Parker inside his five, and he stumbles. He doesn't get to the 15. Tiger Cats stop him there, and that will give the Bombers Field position inside their own 15 on this drive. We're in the fourth quarter. There's 12-21 to go in the football game, and the Tiger Cats lead 29-16. You're listening to the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Great to have you with us on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. RJ Broadhead, Luke Tasker. We're in the fourth quarter. Tiger Cats lead by 13, and the Bombers have their worst starting field position of the football game. They're beginning from their own 14. Crowd ramping it up at Tim Hortons Field. Tiger Cats have lost four in a row at home. Only one win this season. Trying to change that. Big fourth quarter needed, though, by the black and gold. Zach Caleros hands it off. No, he doesn't. It's play action. And, oh, he had Oliveira behind coverage. And he jumped up for it and could not make the catch. There is a flag. In the defensive secondary, Zach Claros ended the play on the ground there. That was close to being another explosive pass play to Brady Oliveira this time. Cats and Tonus in coverage, but I'm interested to see what's going to happen here. Again, a lot of discussion on, on, a, on the penalty flag. Yeah, the officials taking a long talk on the 15. Here's Tom Valesi. Illegal contact, Hamilton number 49. 10-yard penalty, result is a first down. Trey Crawford called. Well, he was surprised to hear his number. He, <laughs> he didn't know the conversation was about him, apparently. And Well, Oliver was going to get that football one way or the other. Wow, taking another look. That was That's a bizarre call. Here's a handoff to Rashid Bailey out of the backfield, and Bailey is up across the 45. Finally brought down there. It's another big gain by Winnipeg. They've had a few explosive plays in the game. Wow, that last play, that, that penalty, costly penalty, was like very, very accidental. Trey Crawford was really blitzing and ran into the 
motioning receiver there, and that's what draw the, drew the flag. Hard to avoid that one. 22 yards for the Bombers. They're up to their own 47. Another play action to Oliveira, and it is knocked down. Yes. JV and Elliott, great play, got in front of Dembski with that hand and knocked the ball away. Great position and great timing. That's so easy to, to draw the pass interference when you're in that position. The ball carrier is in between JV and Elliott, excuse me, the receiver in between JV and Elliott and the quarterback, and so you have to break that pass out from behind the receiver and can't disrupt his arms, can't touch him too much, and that time really well done by JV and Elliott to break it up. The Bombers have been pretty good on second down conversions too. 12 for 17 in the game. This is a big one in the fourth quarter. Second and 10 from their 47. Caleros back to pass, pocket closing, steps up, throws. Dembski makes the catch, but he is tackled immediately by Katzen Tonis and Simone Lawrence, and he's going to be short of the first down. Again, Caleros ending up on the ground there as he threw that completion, but short of the first down, and the punt team for the Blue Bombers is coming onto the field. Just a little long, three yards, third and three. Tiger Cats might want to be on the alert for something here. Just over 10 minutes to go in the game, 13-point lead, two-score lead. It is a punt. Tyreek McAllister running to the near sideline, and he's tackled immediately, and flags fly. He didn't have a second to make a move upfield. Well, I'm guessing flags, no yards, I would assume, right? I would say so, with no how yards. quick those flags were thrown. There and go. there's Tom Valesi. He lets us know before we go to break. There's 10-12 to go in the game. Tiger Cats lead 29-16, to and they have the ball when we come back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Great to have you with us on the Ticats Audio Network. RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. And how about listening from Salt Lake City? That's Rod. No matter the outcome, Ticats are showing they're a playoff contender. Big shout out to Deno and Beto who are at the game. Email us at gameday at ticats.ca. Love to find out where you're listening from. Ticats fans travel well. There's under 10 minutes to go in this football game. Tiger Cats have the ball on their own 20. And off to James Butler, and the uh, Bombers just have limited what James Butler has been able to do. He's been trying, he's been working hard, but that run defense has been great. They have, and the Ticats' run stop has also been great. This has been a passing game. Both offenses had made their hay through the air. James Butler has had a couple sneaky gains, though, that have just been impressive, even, even if they're not for big chunks. Uh, more yardage than you could expect, but here's a second and 10 that's important for this offense. First 12 possessions of the game, the teams combined for 45 points. Last six possessions, Zippo, no points. Offense is run dry. Let's see if Taylor Powell can convert this second and 11 from their own 19. He's under pressure, running to his right, stops. Now he's gonna run to his left, still looking upfield, has a receiver, it's Tyreek McAllister, and he stationed himself right at that first down marker and it is a first down presented by active green and ross the tiger cats keep it rolling what's better there the scrambling by taylor powell or the positioning by tyreek McAllister? yeah McAllister in a great spot but boy uh, taylor powell he that's maturity that's patience he scrambled deep to his right. He was he was 15 yards in deep behind the line of scrimmage, moved up again to then keep his eyes downfield. Well done. Running to his left, throwing on the run. Ball up to the 31. Hand off to James Butler going up the middle, and pretty good run. He'll be very close to a first down, and he's, he's brought down close to the 40. Needed to get to the 41. Great job by Omar Bayless there, number 80. He comes into the blocking form formation from the right side of the offense, cut blocks the D end there, and springs James Butler up for a nice run. James Butler sort of hobbles off the field, got his ankle tied up, tangled up there. It has been heavy traffic for James Butler. 140 rush yards for the Tiger Cats in this game, their second highest total of the year. It's a second and two from their own 39. Taylor Powell looks over his right shoulder and shouts some instructions. Then he gets Omar Bayless on the move. He'll stop at the right side of the line of scrimmage, handoff. And the Tiger Cats are going to be short. Handoff was to Sean Thomas Erlington. They're about a yard short on third down. 
Well, nobody's run off the field yet. What would you here, do here, Luke? Here we go. I mean, you've got to flip this field with Vedvik. Great punt, his last uh, drive, and you're too deep in your own end. Too much time left. You got to, got, to, got to try to get another great kick off of Vedvik's foot. Last kick was 56 yards into the wind. It was a great kick by Vedvik. Averaging 50 yards in this game. Into the wind, he'd like a little more than that. Has to hit a big one. Jamal Parker standing on his 21-yard line. Tiger Cats lead 29 to 16. It's a 13-point lead with seven minutes to go. And Parker was in pretty good position. The right, ball came right to him. He gets across the 30, and the Tiger Cats bring him down there as he had a minimal return. Flags fly after that play. We'll take a break. There's 6.54 to go in the game. Winnipeg has the football, but Tiger Cats have the lead. 29 to 16. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats audio now. 6.54 to go in the football game. The penalty flags on that punt return were on Hamilton. A face mask. That's a 15-yard penalty. So the Bombers were going to start at about their 31. Just outside their 30. Now they'll begin from their own 47-yard line. Big shift in field position, Luke. Yeah, that's that's costly. And it, I, it looked like the face mask it was hard to see from up here, but it was well away from the from the tackle on that punt coverage uh, effort by the Tie Cats. Amazing that these touchdowns have stalled out now. We saw two really productive offenses that, that have kind of found found ways to to, to get in their own way, I, I guess, with turnovers and and much many. Uh, <laughs> way more penalties in the second half than we saw in the first half. Tiger Cats have to keep that touchdown stall going here. They're up by 13. Up by a couple of scores. Winnipeg's dangerous and still lots of time. Calero stays in the pocket. It's closing. He throws. It's picked up. It's intercepted. <laughs> intercepted by Kenneth George Jr. His second of the season. And that is perfect timing to get the football back. Caleros cannot believe that he just threw that pass, and it was a bad decision. It was almost a throwaway, but in the center of the field. The Ticats pressure has a huge part. Casey Sales and Jagera Davis have a huge part of that interception. All those guys right there, he can't see where he's throwing that away, kind of grounding the ball. Kenneth George Jr. opportunistic in the perfect place. Wow. <laughs> two, two weeks in a row we've seen the tale of two halves. Yep. Ottawa, was it, it was two football games, the first half and the second half. And, t and here you've got a defensive battle going on where that first half was, uh, was a quarterback showdown. Turnover battle. Tiger Cats have three takeaways. Winnipeg won. Three interceptions. Taylor oh. Powell, oh, this ball's loose. He got sacked. The ball came loose, and it's another turnover. It's a fumble recovered by Winnipeg, and they're inside the Hamilton 50. And a flag at the end, which is bound to be some sort of 15-yard misconduct-style penalty. This is... What is going on here? I... I jinxed it there this is getting worse and worse offensively we've got trading uh, penalties and interceptions every play it seems taylor powell got popped and that ball came loose and it was only bombers around it we're waiting for the call on the penalty looks like tom valesi is is set Yeah, we'll see here. The what what a missed chance there. The Ticats had the After ball. The play, we have a 10-yard misconduct foul on Winnipeg number 37. The Winnipeg ball first down. Ticats starting a drive after a turnover in Winnipeg territory. Yes. And then you get the back-to-back, -back, the back-to-back -back turnovers. Man, so so costly. And this one really fortunate here because that ball popped out of Taylor Powell's hand. It went backwards towards the Ticat yes, end zone. Yeah, and it was only Bombers over there. This 10 yards is significant because it pushes Winnipeg back on their side of the field on the 52 to begin this drive. Kalaros completes it to Dembski, makes a move on Chris Edwards, cuts into the middle, and he should be close to a first down. Right near the 
Hamilton 50. How about Winnipeg's second half possessions? They've had five. I'm going to read them to you in order. Punt, interception, interception, punt, interception. Really unbelievable here. But now they've got a little something rolling. Caleros, another completion. That puts him over 300 yards passing for the sixth time this season. Dalton Schoen makes the catch. That moves the sticks again. And now Winnipeg has advanced to the Hamilton 40. They're keeping, they're getting a rhythm going offense here. Hurry up. Caleros back to pass again. Throws quick. Another wide open receiver. It's Schoen again. He's inside the 30. And it's another first down for Winnipeg. Tiger Cats lead by 13. There's under five minutes to go. Yep, Caleros calling the plays sort of as they scramble to their formations. Here they go again, they're all set. Ball snapped. Caleros looking left, looking left, nothing there. So now he has to run. He's running to his right, stays behind the line of scrimmage, completes the pass to Kenny Lawler. Good tackle by Lawrence Woods. Looks like he kept him short of the first down. It's funny, Kenny Lawler took the line of scrimmage there. Like I said, they were running this hurry up. Kenny Lawler had both his palms up in the air. He didn't know the play. <laughs> and he ends <laughs> up, he, he ran a little half-hearted hitch route and ends up getting the, the yeah, ball. He had the play exactly right. Yeah, apparently. Second and two, and it's another catch. Another catch by Kenny Lawler, in fact. It'll be enough for the first down. We'll see where they spot it, but they'll be very close to the Hamilton 10. It'll be on the Hamilton 11. Caleros over 300 yards passing. Dembski and Schoen both over 100 yards receiving. Hand off to Oliveira going up the middle. He's inside the five. Tiger Cats able to keep him out of the end zone for now. Under four minutes to go. Clock is running. Tiger Cats lead by 13. Winnipeg looking at some points here. How many? High snap to Caleros. Hands off to Oliveira again. And he is still short. They're going to say third down on the one. Tiger Cats kept him out of the end zone. Might have been Cats and Tonis. I don't know if they got the first down, though. They did. Oh, they did. <laughs> they snuck a first down in there without making, without breaking the goal line. So the ref held up the fist for third down, and flags fly a flag. on this short yardage attempt by the Bombers. So the official. Offside, Hamilton number 30. That penalty be declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. So it's a touchdown for Winnipeg. And now things got a lot more interesting at Tim Hortons Field. Three minutes and 20 seconds to go. It's a 29-22 lead and Sergio Castillo out for the convert. Now this is a big convert. We've had one missed already this game. This a uh, seven point game currently. A miss here would lock that in. The make, of course, brings Winnipeg within six. Sergio Castillo, 32-yard convert attempt. It's up, and it is good. So it is 29-23, to 23, a six-point lead for the Tiger Cats with 3.12 to go. That will feel like an eternity. Tiger Cats need a big drive from their offense where they can take some time off the clock. That touchdown drive, Luke, took only two minutes and 47 seconds. Yeah, they hurried their way down the field, and a lot of that, a lot of that yardage was gained in much less time than that. They slowed it down when they got into score, in scoring territory. Yeah, Taylor Powell and his offense. They got to take a deep breath. That last fumble, that's not a, not not exactly a quarterback error. I mean, he got hit very hard in the backfield unexpectedly, and the ball popped loose very different than than throwing an errant interception right so bounce back from that you gotta you gotta put together a steady drive the way we saw from the, this tie cat team on on multiple occasions in the first half tiger cats have led all game now it's just down to six the advantage with 312 to go tyreek McAllister on the kickoff Gets it at his 10 inside the numbers. Cuts to his left, and Johnny Augustine, the backup running back, makes the tackle at the 25-yard line. Great tackle there by Augustine. He tracked down McAllister, 
uh, right from the moment he returned, he received that kick, and you would have loved to had, have had better field position here to occupy the time and get yourself quickly into scoring territory. Taylor Powell, you can see him calling for the play again in his headset, signaling that he didn't hear it, but they're huddled up now. Tiger Cats begin the drive from their own 25. Near hash mark. Two receivers off to the right. Felix Garon Gauthier circles around Powell. Hand off to James Butler. Needs a big run here, but the Bombers don't let it happen. Cramdy on the tackle. Looks like about three yards for Butler. Well, if you see a defense with every, with all 12 inside of 10 yards of the line of scrimmage, I mean, that's aggressive. That's aggressive. They're, call, they're getting up there to stop a play at the line of scrimmage. They did a good job there. 2.48 to go. We're at the three-minute warning. What a finish we're going to have at Tim Hortons Field. Tiger Cats lead by six, 29-23. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Big second down coming up for the Tiger Cats. There's 2.48 to go in the football game. Tiger Cats lead by six, 29 to 23. They've been good on converting second downs in the game. 17 for 24, but this is the biggest of the game. They're on their own 28 yard line, going into the wind, and it's second and seven. Let's see what they go with here again. A lot of three receiver sets. You saw Winnipeg really load up the box on that first down. Tiger Cats huddling on the 20 yard line. Would love to see Tim White or Terry Godwin again on one of those isolated routes on the outside of the field. And let those guys go win one on one battles. Here we got a five receiver set. Tiger Cats need seven for the first down and to keep this drive going and to take some time off the clock. Let's see if they can do it. Taylor Powell gets the snap, runs to his right on the run, throws, completes it. Omar Bayless, it's a first down. Presented by Active Green and Ross, the Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Number 80 entering the lineup last week, and I, I've been impressed with the, with the difference he's made in this game. He's been there at some crucial moments, crucial first downs. That was a beautiful formation there from the Ticats. I really thought Tim White, Terry Godwin, and Omar Bayless were all three open to, to catch that ball. I mean, they, it was just a great concept that, that had the advantage on the Blue Bombers there. Huge second down conversion for so many reasons. Takes time off the clock. Maybe the Tiger Cats can add to their lead, but they've got a long way to go for that. They're on their own 36. Fresh set of downs, though. Taylor Powell hands off to James Butler. He's been limited. Gets to the 40, and then Winnipeg puts up a wall. Looks like a gain of three, maybe four yards. Similar situation to what we just had, Luke. Yep, that's right. You got to do it again. You, and, the, and we'll see Scott Milanovic and Taylor Powell what they draw up for this for this time. But it's tough to just do this time and again. These these passing situations on second downs. And man, we have a, a very very aggressive Blue Bomber defense here who are trying to get Ticats off the field and get Zach Claros time to drive down. Long discussion in the huddle for Taylor Powell and the Tiger Cats. Balls on the 40. It's second and six. Powell hands off to Butler, and he dives into the pack, and he'll only get a yard, maybe two, but that's still well short of the first down. Yeah, not what I thought we were going to see there. It's third and three. You know, I, I think I think you put the ball in Taylor Powell's hands and let him have a chance at making the difference there on that second down. Yeah, now you're now you're going to put this put it back in the the hands of your defense to make the difference. You're going to have to, and they have stopped Zach Kolaris tonight. You're going to have to do it again. This is the time when it matters. Corey Vedvik out to punt, and the Tiger Cats will try to let this play clock roll down. It'll get under two minutes on the game clock. On the play clock, there's seven six five. Bedvik waiting 2-1. Ball is snapped, and Bedvik, his kick, a little bit shorter. Harker gets it at the 25. Tiger Cats were a little close, and it'll be a no yards. Flag flies. Bad time for that penalty. That'll improve the Bombers' field position. Yeah, that's two drives in a row no where... Yards. Hamilton, number 43. 15-yard penalty, first down. Two drives with a 
Bombers move up due to a penalty right off the bat here. This is going to be really good field position here. Bombers have had some big plays in the game. Two receivers over 100 yards. That's Dembski and Schoen. Tiger Cats defense has three interceptions. What an important stand this is for the defense. Crowd loud at Tim Hortons Field. Bombers start from their 42, down by six. Zach Caleros gets the snap. He's under pressure. He's down. They sacked him. Trey Crawford will get the sack, his third of the season. And that is a loss of four, five. Well, you've got... It's, thir it's They're going to go for it on third down, right? So you've got an offense that's ch taking off big chunks. You've got to stop them twice here on what is second and 15. Second sack of the game for the Tiger Cats. Caleros throws. It's a low pass. Bailey can't make hey. the catch. You Thurman did? back there on coverage. He dropped back, and Bailey couldn't make the catch. Well, they've done it once. Now here's the third down right here. Caleros is going to stay on the field. It's third and 15. You just... You can't, you can't help but but acknowledge that Zach Claros is a guy who makes plays like this third and 15 right here. Who is going to do it? We'll see. You've got an umbrella of Ticat secondary sitting back at that first down marker, 15 yards be, beyond the line of scrimmage. Crowd so loud, Caleros moved out of the huddle to cover his ear holes on his helmet as Buck Pierce, the offensive coordinator, gave him the call. Bombers looked like they were way offside on the waggle. Caleros throwing deep, and it is. <laughs> Knocked down, almost picked off, but it's knocked down. That's even better for the Tiger Cats. It's a turnover on downs with a minute 18 to go. No flags on the field. What a great job by the Tiger Cats rush. They brought four, and everybody else was back in that deep umbrella there. You thought for a second Zach Claris was maybe going to take off on that third and 15 because there was so much space. But he puts it up there, runs out of time in his pocket. Great job by the secondary. And now you're right, RJ. It's a good thing that hit the turf and instead of an interception. It would have been like a 60-yard punt, effectively. Yeah. Now you're in field goal position. Of course, you're going to hope to just run out the clock, though. Ball's on the Winnipeg 37. Minute 18. Ball security important. Taylor Powell. Calmly in the shotgun, waves his right hand over his head. Terry Godwin, he heads off to the right. It's a handoff to Butler, who runs to his left. And he's going to lose yards. Push back to the 39, so it's loss of a couple. No timeouts for the Bombers left here. A minute 13. You know, you can only re you can only reasonably hope to take off, you know, 25 seconds or so with, with, uh, with a play as the Clock runs down, stays in bounds. But this second and 12. Ball. Yeah, and the second and 12 is tough, and you just took a tackle for a loss, which makes that a harder field goal. Taylor Powell, second and 12, ball on the Winnipeg 39. He's under center. Hands off to James Butler. He goes ahead. He's oh. to the 30. Finally brought down. He's really close to the first down. You can hear the cheer from the crowd at Tim Hortons Field. James Butler has one of his best runs of the game at a perfect time. Well, I, I think you have to kick this field goal right now. Let's see if it, let's see how close this actually is. Less than a yard, half a yard. Okay, so it is interesting. It, it seemed like farther than further than that, but this is this is really interesting here. If they do not convert this third down right here, you've got Chances at a at a 46 seconds is a lot of time running a hurry up offense. Here we go. Kai Loxley comes in, short yardage quarterback. He's under center, standing straight up, waves his right hand. Now he tucks under David Beard the center. Loxley waiting, waiting, waiting. Maybe trying to draw Winnipeg offside. Oh boy, that's close. He dove to his right. It looked like he had enough. Let's see if he gets the spot. That was closer than the Tiger Cats wanted. And they might be calling for the measurement. Wow. It is razor thin either way. That is not a 
Great spot for the Tiger Cats. Loxley has been really good in the short yardage situations. Had a touchdown earlier in the game. And here's the measurement. This is massive. 24 seconds to go. Tiger Cats up by six. It is a first down. Wow. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. They needed it. They got it by about three inches. Wow. Kyle Loxley made it happen. He was under center for so long because he was letting the clock tick down, but that's kind of hard. The timing is off. The rhythm's off of that short yardage play, but they made it happen. Gutsy call. Very interesting moment in the game there. You could have kicked a field goal, but you put it on Kyle Loxley in the offense, and they made it happen. Victory formation here for the Tiger Cats. Taylor Powell gets the snap, takes a knee. They'll have to do it again. A lot of the crowd sticking around at Tim Horton's field. They love it. What a performance. And Taylor Powell, who usually keeps his emotions in check, is waving his hands to the crowd to get loud. There he is. He's still doing it. He gets under center, David Beard, and it's pitched back to Terry Godwin, and he just throws the ball to the Hamilton sideline. The game is over. The Tiger Cats win. They beat the Blue Bombers. They win back-to-back -back games for the second time this season. And they start off the final third of the season like they did last year with a win, 29 to 23. And that, Luke, I'm sure you'd agree, was the Tiger Cats' best performance at home this season. Unbelievable. Just what a great, what a great game. What a great team win. The offense came out strong, started scoring points immediately. And when the game lagged, when the offense is lagged, the defense held in there. They stopped Zach Caleros. They forced the turnovers. Just an unbelievable, you can see Lawrence Woods on the field doing backflips. You got Simone Lawrence who's excited. It's a team that's energized again. It's a team that really is changing the nature of this season for themselves. And RJ, what do you think right now if you're an Alouette <laughs> or a Red Black? Hey, I was gonna ask you. Or even or even Stampeders. I mean, this yep. is the league is looking at the at the Ticats saying. This well, is the team we thought the Tiger yeah. Cats were going to be at the start of the year. That's true. And now these other teams are saying, well, now we got this team to deal with. I yes. mean, look, this is very interesting. And Zach Claris and these Blue Bombers did not expect to have to go back to Winnipeg after a loss here. They're going into a bye week. And they have to sit on this sort of strange road bump in their season while the Tie Cats are really finding themselves. Three out of four wins in the last four weeks of football. And they're playing good. Taylor Powell's progression has been really fun to watch. You've got an energized defense who, I think if I can describe the Ticats defense, RJ, opportunistic. It's not perfect, not beautiful. They had a lot of deep plays, deep throws on them, touchdowns in that first half. And then they got strong. They were resilient, and they took advantage of mistakes that Winnipeg made. This is just a fun team. Time now for the Access Storage recap of the game. Score a touchdown with affordable storage. Access Storage has flexible storage solutions at a store near you. Try four weeks free. Details at accessstorage.ca. Luke, the standings in the East Division. Tiger Cats are now tied with Montreal for second. Yes, Montreal has the tiebreaker, but it's a pretty good spot for the Tiger Cats. You think back a couple of weeks ago, we weren't even talking about maybe a home playoff game, but now the Tiger Cats are trending in the right direction and they've got themselves in a great spot. They do. You go into a team meeting after games like we saw in the first part of the season, and those team meetings are saying it's it's the building blocks. It's like the it's like the day one stuff again. We can't turn the ball over. We can't get penalties. You got to we got to score to now you're going in a team meeting after tonight and, being like, and you're talking high level. You're saying, look at how when the offense had a turnover, the defense responded. Look at how we got into the score zone and we capitalized and we came away with seven, not three. And you're talking about a, a team that's transforming itself into uh, a group of guys ready for the postseason, a group, a group of guys fighting for that second place spot. And by the way, you've got a huge game that you're walking into this coming week now against the outright first in the East Toronto Argonauts and now now this the the onlook CFL fans are thinking mm, this is actually interesting oh now. yeah oh yeah <laughs> this is interesting because you got the Ticats all of a sudden found themselves well who, a guy who was a third string quarterback who's now a touchdown throwing uh you know true CFL passer 
fun. This is going to be an exciting last five weeks of the season. What a way to kick off this final third with a home win against Winnipeg. Yes, another win at Tim Hortons Field against Winnipeg. Very similar to what the Tiger Cats did a season ago. They went 5-1 and one in their final six games. They'd love to do it again. Luke, you mentioned it. Big game next Saturday in Toronto. That will set up a big battle. But this one today, 29-23, Tiger Cats beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at Tim Hortons Field. Tiger Cats post game with Bubba O'Neill and Andy Fantuz is coming up next for our producer, Dave Cadeau, statistician Jeff Girardat, our operator, Michael Steyer, and for Luke Tasker, I'm RJ Bryden. Thanks for listening to Hamilton Tiger Cats football on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Streaming live at listen.tiecats.ca. This is the Tiger Cats Audio Network.